What's up, board game people? It's news time. It's been a great week on crowdfunding, and there are a few great retail releases and stories to talk about. Today we have updates from Kingdoms Forlorn, Madara, Solar175, and many, many more. A few of these stories will be a bit longer when necessary, but most will remain in the usual short form you're accustomed to. First off, I do not receive any money for making my videos from game companies. I make them for gamers like you and me to keep us up to date on the latest happenings in crowdfunding and the industry. If I get something wrong or we disagree on something, let me know in the comments. This one escaped from my news video last week because, well, I'm an idiot and I left the door open. Kingdoms Forlorn has extended the price deadline until the end of July so that everyone can get their eyes on Aeon's Trespass Odyssey's unboxing. They've included that video in the update if you missed it. They released a statement basically stating that they'll ship in the fairest, most cost-effective way possible. They even subsidized the shipping when necessary and wish to remain open and transparent about the shipping costs and process. This will become a theme today and is becoming a theme in the industry, so pay attention. Others aren't doing so well. They've given us a glimpse of the Dire Rat mob and describe him as the first 2 HP monster, meaning that a single wound will not take them down. In a swarm, these little buggers could be a big problem. They gave us a rundown on the loot system that is still in heavy development, and finally have given us a glimpse of the Tale of Sir Ubar. Strange is the Tale of Sir Ubar the Great. Great Ubar, Ubar Van Eric. He has found himself in the sunken kingdom of Utrebant, looking for a lost legacy of his ancestors. Banished from the kingdom on the eve of the rising of the deep fog, Sir Ubar is as troubled as the place he delves into, for he's stricken with a curse of his own, semianthropy. In other words, he is part man and part ape. The real problem is, is he doesn't know. Is he a man turning into an ape, or a first man turning into a human? And finally, they left us with a Cycle 5 tease for ATO. Kinfire Chronicles has launched the first episode of their webtoon or webcomic this week that will help set up their upcoming campaign launching on Kickstarter on August 9th. You'll have to sign up for their newsletter to get access. If you're having trouble finding it, hit me up on Discord and I'll help you get access. Kinfire Chronicles is the baby of a stable of talented and well-pedigreed developers with experience from games such as Arkham Horror, Descent, Arcane, and The Witcher 3. Kinfire Chronicles Night Falls is a 1-4 player co-op, quest-based RPG board game. Players take on the role of Seekers, adventurers who are fighting to push back the darkness, threatening to change and destroy the world of Atios. Much more to come on this campaign in August. The pledge manager for Unsettled Reprint with additional planets is officially opened on GameFound, with a few extra surprises. I thought I was getting out easy when I found out the surprises weren't game-related, such as a t-shirt, a patch, a tumbler, a stress ball that's tempting but a bit pricey, and then I saw it. Warning, if you can't help yourself like me, this is an expensive mistake to make. Not only can you pick up the unsettled goodness you'll want, but they're also offering the final copies of Indication, their last game in reprint that's on track to deliver really soon. I was doing good until I saw this, now not so much. They also have included some great artwork from Nier and Koguya for your viewing pleasure. This next one should come with a mountain of warnings. Let's just say this is your official soapbox warning. I'll also throw in a trigger warning here. Some of you won't agree with me on this, and that's okay. Voices should be heard on all sides. Mythic has published an update attempting to justify the increase in shipping prices over their original estimates from the Anastir Kickstarter by throwing a wall of excuses and data in front of people as a smokescreen to disguise a near doubling of initial estimates and an attempt to shut down arguments from backers. I initially posted a comment asking why they're accepting invoices and paying invoices for shipping now on a game that everyone knows won't ship for a year or more. I received a well-written response from Charles Elliott, who is marked as a collaborator on the project. I don't know if Charles works for the company or is just a helpful backer attempting to answer questions. He explains that collecting shipping up front has become an accepted process to help ensure a backer's commitment to the project. Well, some have already committed well over $600 to the project. The commitment's already been made. The TLDR is that Mythic is only doing what everyone else considers best practice and policy. If you want the full read, check out the comment section and the update posted in the video description. My reply reads, Thank you for your well thought out answer, Charles. You're absolutely correct on many points. The sad part of this is we all know that we exist in a rapidly changing climate today. 
relying on antiquated practices and policies. Just because that's the way things have always been done in the past doesn't make them right. We as a world have continued practices that were considered tradition for far too long to dire consequences that have hurt people and countries simply because that's the way it's always been done. That isn't the way to run a business that's innovating and leading its sector. Mythic cannot continue forward with their heads in the sand. This isn't Mythic's first or even second or third project to run during the shipping crisis. They posted estimates at a time when they were considering subsidizing backer shipping costs, then waited until after the full refund date to decide not to subsidize. People are absolutely right to have sticker shock and hold them accountable for any perceived slight. It appears as a bait and switch. If consumers cow to the pressure from businesses, we are hurt. If we voice our opinions, smart businesses listen and adapt and both the consumer and the business profit from the relationship. I, for one, have been a fan of Mythic's games for quite some time. Maybe not all their business practices, but their innovation in the market and their ability to deliver on massive hits has been what has drawn me to the company. Lately, the good faith from past performances has dwindled. They're turning the corner towards being a deaf corporate giant that believes that the sheep will accept what they are fed. I, for one, can't in good conscience promote or continue to back future projects until the company settles the issues they're obviously experiencing internally and until their external procedures that affect us, the consumers, are more in line with those of companies who exist off crowdfunding platforms. Whether they want to admit it or not, Mythic is a company that funds their games and operates off the money they receive from crowdfunding. Without the capital, the company would not exist and will cease to exist. We the consumer are their investors. We absolutely have stake and voice in the future of the company. If our money disappears, so will Mythic. So yes, we must demand that such practices cease and that problems are recidified in the future. Mythic has stated that this will be their last big box project of the year and for the foreseeable future. This might be good for the company or signaling the end. On some happier news. Primal The Awakening is back again this week, showing off the resin samples from the factory. They've included an update on the state of development, and that the third phase of playtesting is now complete and the game is looking great. Narrative design continues on the around 50 scenarios that will be included in the game. Translations are getting started now that the writing is well underway. The final pieces of art are being created, and they've moved to a new office. The timeline currently looks like the game ships from the factory hubs in quarter four, with quarter one delivery to backers being targeted. Someone at Tonaris Adventures has slipped and hit that big red button. Production has officially started and all the board game content and the pledge manager is closed. They've given us one last look at the Madness box, the Mythical pack, and the Legendary pack, and a few of the large minis that were included in the PM only. Arietia hit us with a small but promising update this week showing off the first miniature samples. For pre-painted miniatures, they're looking great. They offered an update on the combat tuning, which is coming along nicely, and they've given us a peek at the stat progression. The project continues to run along schedule and still hopes to deliver around the end of the year, with the PM closing sometime around August. The update for Hell is sad to say looking a bit hellish. This update is covering the design for the premium trays. This is the first time that many backers are finding out that they will have a dollar store storage solution for the game if they didn't purchase the overpriced plastic trays. While there's nothing wrong per se with the design presented, they still haven't stated if these will be hard plastic trays or they're merely vacuum form trays that should have been included from the start, as they are with nearly every premium game you purchase. If you did not get the trays, you'll be getting your game component shipped to you in plastic bags with a block of cardboard taking up the remaining space in the game box. Little progress has been made on the roadmap, and there are still no dates attached to anything other than stating that this roadmap only covers Wave 1 production, which will be French and English only. Let's take a crowdfunding break and look towards some retail news real quick. First up on our new releases, Arkham Horror LCG, the Path to Caracosa campaign expansion released on the 1st. On the 8th, we got Marvel Crisis Protocol's Heimdall and Scourge character pack and the Asgardian affiliation pack. You can find affiliate links where available to those in the video description. Fantasy Flight has announced the Scarlet Keys expansion for the Arkham Horror card game. These expansions will be available in the fall. Strange disappearances haunt the city of Arkham, Massachusetts. With each object, building, or person that vanishes, they are erased from not just physical existence, but from memory as well. 
Only a select few investigators remember those that vanished, or so they believe. Before long, the mystery unravels into an international conspiracy, and our wary investigators find themselves recruited by a shadowy government agency whose sole purpose is the collection and research of paradimensional implements they call keys. However, they aren't the only ones searching for them. This is the beginning of what is being dubbed the Secret War, a campaign for Arkham Horror the scale and scope of which has not been seen before. You can get the full details on the link in the video description. They're also announcing Marvel Champions The Phoenix Hero Pack. Phoenix has a dangerous bond with a cosmic entity and her playstyle is all about control. If and when you unleash the Phoenix Force, you will summon your nemesis into play as well, Dark Phoenix. Allies for this pack include Banshee and Marvel Girl. Warhammer releases for the week include the Chaos Space Marines Codex, Data Cards and Dice, Combat Patrols for the Chaos Space Marines, and the Gene Stealer Cult. Next up, we have a new update from the Witcher Old World, and this one has brought some grumbling with it. This time, they're letting us have a look at the design for the big box storage solution and the shaded miniatures. The grumblings are about both items. Siri's been removed from the big box design, and the bottom and the top don't really look cohesive at all. The miniatures wash seems to have been done on unprimed miniatures, causing very odd behavior and unusual pulling of the wash. Group pictures in the update are not the worst looking but upon inspection of the close-ups they link to, the problems are undeniable. Thankfully, they are listening. They posted another update stating they're reading and analyzing the comments and formulating a new plan for the miniatures. They're also considering ideas brought forward by the community for the big box design. They've extended the pledge manager while they work on final solutions. Dawn of Madness has given us a short update stating that the card files have been sent to the factory and they're hoping to show off samples very, very soon. They're also hoping to record a playthrough at Gen Con with some of the victims they have signed up and will be sharing that as soon as possible. They end by sharing that rough estimates put the game at over 1200 cards in total. Solar175 has put out their July update. While they don't have a ton to report, what they do have is excellent news. Finalized files are making their way to the factory and production will start early next month. Accordingly, the pledge manager will be closing by the end of this month. As of right now, they hope to have the game in the hands of backers by April of 2023. The League of Dungeoneers is entering the sample production phase. They're currently waiting on the first copy to make it to them for review. The project right now is running around two weeks behind schedule, but for those accustomed to Kickstarters, that's no big deal. They'll not be charging for shipping until they know the exact weight of the entire game, so not until the samples have been largely approved. They treated us to a peek at the first sheet of standees in the update, and they look vibrant and well illustrated. These really will stand out across the table. We will hear back from them in a few weeks after they have the samples in hand and get some much needed R&R. Madara has closed their pledge manager, and they're offering us a sneak peek of Act 3 to tide us over. Act 3 is set at over 40 hours alone. The entirety of Madara is going to be massive. This update is massive itself, and there is enough here for an entire video. I'm going to quickly go over the contents, but I encourage you to use the link in the video description to check out all the juicy details for yourself. They discuss scaling and the introduction of an option to reset XP and simply build characters again at the start of Act 2. There will be an option for a story recap starting in Act 2, and this will allow you to choose your flag should you have lost your notes. They discuss Keystone Disciplines adventure NPCs and party size, consequences, new item tiers, espers and conduits, monsters, difficulty, design, and so much more. They end the update with a ton of amazing community paint jobs and content. It's great to see a publisher with their finger on the pulse of the community so well. Escape from Stalingrad Z has posted their design update for July 2022. Everything is going well with the design of the game and they've finished the final scenarios and are working on layouts now. More to come in future updates. There's still 500 backers that need to finish their game found pledge manager selections, so get on it. The latest news from Black Rose War Rebirth is showing off the schools of magic and a few plastic samples they have received. The miniatures are looking great and the details from the different schools are nice, but I'd love to hear a production timeline update on this project. The Great Wall reprint has a short update detailing a new solo pack upgrade that can be ordered with or without other items in the PM. 
One version includes a revised 2.0 rulebook with some cards and that have additional polish applied. Please read the update in full if you have questions about which version to add to your pledge. The newest update from Chronicles of Dragonor is titled The Ship Has Sailed. Now I read and reread the update looking for a trick, but it seems the title is true to its word. Wave 1 is beginning to ship from China. A few people in the Asian countries probably already have the game in hand. There are no dates to be told just yet, but I would guesstimate we should be seeing ships hit the US ports in about a month and a half or so. Wave 1 is just reprints of the first game. New content will all be included in Wave 2. Hopefully we'll have some better information on dates soon. Wow, we made it to the end. I know this has been a long one, but the news is the news and it never stops flowing. If it does stop flowing, well, we're all in big trouble. Hopefully I touched on everything you wanted to hear about. If you have another project you think I should be following, please let me know in the comments. Also, if you haven't already, please consider subscribing to the channel, hitting that bell, and leaving us a like to help our channel grow. Next up is likely a campaign guide on Tuesday or Wednesday, and then our habitually late month in review video. Thanks to everyone watching and commenting. Stay safe and play something fun tonight.